Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar. I hope that you can hear me okay and you should be able to see the first of our presentation slides on your screen. My name is Heather Giggs and I'm joined today by presenter Kirsty Ramsey. Hopefully you're familiar with the National Foundation for Educational Research, which we call NFER for short. We have supported the education community for over 70 years through reliable research and assessment. Today, Kirsty is going to talk us through the NFER Tests Analysis Tool, which is free to access with the NFER Tests. For those of you who have previously used the assessments, you might be familiar with the Excel tools previously provided by NFER. This NFER Tests Analysis Tool replaces those Excel tools and enables you to manage your NFER test data in a quick and efficient online area and enable easy comparisons. If you're not familiar with NFER tests, these popular tests have been used by thousands of schools and they're available for use across years one to six to help schools confidently monitor attainment and progress. They're termly paper-based assessments and they've been developed by our assessment experts with teaching backgrounds and standardised with over 60,000 pupils taught the national curriculum, which enables you to benchmark your pupil results nationally. This webinar is just going to talk a little bit about the tool that supports the tests. It should last for around 20 minutes and we have a few minutes at the end to answer any questions you might have. Hopefully you can see a control panel on the right hand side of your screen, which you can use if you do have a question. Feel free to type these throughout the session and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation. You can minimise the control panel if you prefer, you'll only require it if you do wish to ask a question. Any questions will be anonymous and will only be seen by myself and Kirsty. If you're having any trouble hearing our speaker or technical issues you feel might be from our end, then please use this control panel to raise your hand or send us a message. If we have any issues, then I'll do my best to respond and address these without disrupting Kirsty. Also, just please be advised that we will make the video of the webinar available on our website. So if you'd like to view this again or pass it on, then it will be available over the next few days. I'll pass you over to Kirsty. Okay, brilliant. So I'm going to briefly show you around the tool and then spend a bit of time looking at the different reports you can generate. So when you first log in, you'll come to this home screen here. Before you can do any kind of data analysis, you need to go into this administration section. There are two main areas you'll use here, manage staff and manage pupils. So I'll just briefly show you what manage staff accounts you can do. So here you can set up as many staff members as you like. We recommend that you set one up for everyone that you would like to have access to the tool. So each person has their own individual account. To create a new one, all you do is click this create new button up here. Select their permission level. Type in their details. And then hit create. This will give you the login details they'll need, so you need to take a note of these and pass them on to the staff member. Anyone that's been created already, you can access them here. You can reset their passwords, edit any of their details, or delete users if they're no longer a member of staff at the school. The second section in the admin area is manage pupils. So this is where you'll upload all your pupils and be able to look at them and make any changes to their details. So the upload pupils will need to be done before any test data can be entered. We've provided you with a template that you can download here, open up, and then you just need to complete each of the columns with your pupils details. Once it's saved to your computer, you can browse to it and click the upload button. So the first screen here will just match to make sure that the column headers in your sheet match what we're expecting. The next is where you check the data in the spreadsheet. So you'll see here there's a few cells highlighted. So this is when the data in your sheet is outside of the expected range or is invalid. So anything highlighted in red you'll need to look at and fill in or amend before you can continue. And anything highlighted in yellow, it's recommended that you look at. It's outside of our expected range, but you can continue if the information is correct. So once you've made your changes, you can hit save to validate these. And you'll see that the highlights have gone. And then finish to upload your pupils.
Once Pupils are uploaded, you can view and edit the files. This will list all of the pupils in that year group. You have the options here to edit any of their individual details or delete any pupils once they've left. You can also add new individuals here by clicking this and typing in their information. Or you can delete the full year group. There's two more areas here in Manage Pupils to point out. Firstly is Move Pupils up one year. So this is available once per academic year. And what it will do is move all of the pupils that pupils that you've got entered up into the next year group, taking with them any test data you've entered, so you can continue to track progress and continue to save any of the details and data you've entered. We've also got this bulk update pupil classes, where you can select groups of pupils and update the class names associated to them, which is really useful to use after you've moved pupils up one year. Great, so I'll go back to home now. Once you've got all your pupils in, you can then begin to enter your test data. This is done here through NFER Classroom Tools and then entering into our NFER Test Analysis Tool. So the first, first thing you need to do here is select which group of pupils you would like to use. So this can be done at class level, year group level, key stage level and school level. For this, I'm just going to select our year ones that we've just added onto the system. And then to enter data, there's an option up here for enter data. You'll now be taken to a screen where you need to select which assessment you want to enter the data for. I'm going to select year one summer maths and hit continue. So there's three different ways that data entry can be done. The first place you'll be taken to is to enter your marks by pupil. You can select pupils from this drop down list here or by hitting these previous or next buttons to cycle through. You'll have to enter the test date first. This helps us calculate the um, age standardized score based on when they took the test. So all of the questions in the paper are listed here down the left. You have a box here where you can enter in the marks achieved for each of the questions. You've also got these options where you can set all correct, which will give them a correct or full marks for each question, or set all incorrect, which gives them zero for all of the questions. I'll just save that and then I'll move on to the next area where you can enter, which is enter by question. Okay, so on this method, you'll see that you can enter test results for all of your pupils in one go. So your pupils are listed down the left here, and then there's a separate column for each question in the test paper. Again, you've got a box where you can enter them in. So what you'll do is enter scores for all pupils one question at a time. Or, again, you have the set all correct and set all incorrect buttons. Now, I'll just swap over to paper two quickly, and then I'll show you the final method for entering test data, which is to enter by total score. So this is the quickest method, but it won't give you access to our question level analysis or program of study reports, which need the question level data to generate. So for this one, again, you have the box to enter your test date, and then each pupil is listed. And in here, you would just write the total score for the paper as a whole. And then you can hit save, and these will save into the system. For those of you that have used our downloadable Excel sheets, um, progress tool version before, or if you've got historical NFER test data stored anywhere on Excel, we've got this import results option. So from here, you can download a template, which will list all of the pupils in your selected year group, and then has a separate column for each paper. 
you can then copy the date the test was taken and the total score achieved by the pupils and import multiple test results in one go. It's a really great way to get all your historical data in. As I've mentioned, it is only 10 to total scores, so you won't be able to access the program study report or question level analysis reports, but you will be able to look at results, progress charts, and age-related expectations. So once your data is entered, you can then generate your results tables. So I'll just swap to my year six, you have a full set of data in, and then you can go to view results here on the right. You'll need to select which subject, which year group or key stage you want to look at, which term the assessment's from, and what type of score you'd like to look at. Or you can do as I've done now and select all to show all for your group of pupils. So you'll see here I've got all my pupils listed down the left, and then there's a separate column for each test paper. I've got my raw scores. These have been automatically converted into the standardized score and the age standardized score for each and every pupil and each test. You can then export this into Excel, which allows you to either save it somewhere or you can use it to do a bit of more um, analysis on the data. Okay. So, as I was saying a moment ago, there are four different reports that you can generate, which are displayed up on the screen now. The first one I'm going to show you is the program of study report. So, you can only view this for one assessment at a time and only if item level data has been added. So, for this example, I'm going to pick my year five summer reading. Down here on the left, you've got each of the program of study or content domain areas of each subject. In the middle, we've got the marks available, so the total number of marks within your chosen assessment that cover off each of these program of study areas. And then on the right, you have the marks that your selected group of pupils have achieved on average for each of those areas. This is a really great way of flagging any particular areas of the national curriculum that might need a bit more focus or where the knowledge of your particular group of pupils might not be as strong. You can cross-reference these areas with your teacher guides or the question level analysis report to see which questions in the paper are referring to which of the program of study areas. You can also export this report into Excel or print it using these two buttons up here. The next report I have to show you is the question level analysis. Again, it's one assessment at a time that you can view and only if item level data has been entered. I'll pick and show you the year five summer reading again. So this report takes your selected pupil responses and compares these against the nationally representative sample responses. You can see this in the upper grid here. So this row here is showing the average mark achieved by your selected cohort for each of the questions. The row below is showing the average mark achieved by the nationally representative sample for each of the questions. If there is a difference of more than 0.2 for any, for any single mark for any of the questions, this will be highlighted in the row below. So it's highlighted here in red where it's lower, and then you can see it's highlighted green here where the pupil cohort has achieved higher on that question. In this row here below, you'll see the program of study area that relates to each of the questions, as I mentioned before. If I scroll down now to the lower grid, you'll see that you've got the item responses for each of your individual pupils, so you can see how they responded to each question. This also shows you the number of correct, the number of incorrect, and the number of questions not attempted on that paper, as well as the percentage that each has scored. In the top part of the grid, you can see this as an average for the whole group. Again, like the program study report, this can be exported into Excel or printed using these two buttons. Next, we'll have a look at the standardized progress report. 
So for this, you'd select two assessments that you would like to compare the standardised progress between. I'm going to select my reading year three summer and reading year five summer and hit show. So this compares standardised progress between two different assessments for your selected cohort. Each of the pupils in the group will have their own data point plotted out as a triangle. So you can hover over these and it shows you which people it is, what the score was on each of the assessments and the confidence band associated with that score. This diagonal line through the middle here shows the expected progress between the two assessments. If a pupil has a similar score on both assessments, they'll appear on or near the line, like these here. Those with high achievement appear higher up the line, and those with lower achievement appear lower down. But as they're both still on or very near the line, they're still both progressing at the expected level. If the assessments are of the same subject, like here where they're both reading, then any of the data points above the line show that that pupil is making more progress than expected, and any of the data points below the line show that they're making less progress than expected. If I was to change one so it was two different subject assessments that we're showing, so now I've got reading and maths, then you can look and see any of the data points above the line show that that pupil performed better at the subject on the vertical axis, so in this case it's maths, and any below the line, like this one, show that that pupil performed better on the subject on the horizontal axis. This report can be printed by pressing this button up here, and it can also be exported. You can pick from a variety of different formats to see which one you'd prefer to export the report into. So the final report is the age-related expectations. This displays for individual pupils one at a time. So you can cycle through your pupils pressing your previous and next buttons or by selecting from the drop-down list here. So you'll see below that there's a coloured stacked bar chart for all of the reading and math summer assessments. Each of the segments on the stack bar chart relates or is representative of a different level of achievement against the age-related expectations. So this yellow segment here is representative not, of not yet achieving age-related expectations. This green one shows achieving and the pink one at the top is high achievement. We've also got two smaller segments between for lower and higher borderlines. The standardised score achieved by the pupil is represented by this diamond shape here, and then the upper and lower confidence bands are lines on either side here and here. The positioning of these or this score can give you an indication about the performance of that pupil against the age-related expectations. So you can monitor progress by comparing the sta standardised score at two different points in time. So where there's a similar score, like for example here in maths, summer year four and summer year five, that shows that the pupil or implies that the pupil is making the same amount of progress as others in the year group. If I go back up to reading and we look at reading spring year three compared to summer year three, you'll see that the confidence band and the standardized score are now higher than the previous test which implies that they're making greater progress than expected. If the confidence band is lower, so if we compare maths autumn year four to summer year four, this implies that they're making less progress than expected. This report is really, really useful for informing any teacher assessments as to whether the pupil is meeting the age-related learning expectations across the school years. Again, this can be printed here or they can be exported by clicking this button here and selecting which format you'd like to export it into. Hopefully that's given you a good idea and an overview of the tool. Once you begin using it yourself, you can access further support through this menu here and clicking support. This includes more videos plus a full user guide that you can get hold of by downloading it here.
Okay.